right. All right. This has been a wonderful convention and a tremendous conference, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be in front of you this morning. For those that don't know a lot about me, I am a professional radionics instructor. And I have a, a practice where I work with farmers from around the country and around the world and do an awful lot with agriculture, a lot with plants, a lot with animals, both four-legged and two-legged. It is not significantly different than what many of the rest of you do with your energy work. And for those that don't understand radionics, think of it as a left brain approach to right brain work. And if you looked at the radionics instruments that I use, they look an awful lot like a 1950s or 1960s Heath kit radio set. You know, you've got the knobs and the dials and the numbers and all that stuff, which, you know, for left brain guys like me, it's just, oh yeah. And there's lights that light up. Sometimes they flash. <laughs> <laughs> but that, 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 is, that is what my business is, and that's how it really led me to get into some of this information and to approach it perhaps differently than some other people have approached the energy work. I really have got a, to the point in my practice and in my life where I'm able to understand more and more that this reality that we live in is not made of stuff. It's made of energy and information. And we talk about raising the frequency and we talk about doing, but it's all energy and information. And in a nutshell, if you have enough energy, you can change the information. If you don't have enough energy, you cannot change the information. For our energy workers that work with us all the time, and they say, well, you know, this person has a lot of energy or a lot of mojo. Well, what they've got is basically the same voltage, which is the wrong word, but it's, it's one I'll use. They've got the same voltage as you and me, but they've got a lot better focus. And as we've done our energy work and as we've gotten better, we've noticed that as we're able to focus better, we get better results. And if you've been to a Raymond Grace con uh, conference where you know, he's doing his work and, he's, and it's phenomenal what he's able to do, the difference between what he does and what most of us are able to do is that he's got tremendous focus and he knows it's going to work. We don't have as good a focus usually and we think it might work. Well, as a radionics guy, I've got this instrument that does the focus for me. And it holds that focus. And I can't do anything with my instruments that you can't do with your own intent, with your own bobbers, with your own devices. But the difference is that I don't have to maintain that focus. And I can use the energy of the instrument to get my results. And so that instrument gives me a tremendous opportunity to be able to go into and work with large tracts of land, herds of, of, of animals, large flocks, and I don't have to become part and parcel of what's going on there. And that led me on the trek where in the last few years what I found was I didn't know enough. And though even though I'm over 250 miles away from my home base and by definition I'm an expert, you can agree or disagree on that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I just simply didn't know enough about. Sometimes I did everything right and nothing happened. And so there's a couple ways to look at that. One is that either I didn't do everything right or I missed something. And so in my world, if it works, there's a reason that it works. If it doesn't work, there's a reason that it doesn't work. And so if it doesn't work, I don't think of it as something magical or mystical. I look at it as there's a scientific reason why it didn't work. I don't believe in magical or mystical. Unless, of course, you consider that this, our entire 
universe is magical and mystical, in which case then, yes, it's all magical or mystical. But because we have a piece of that magic and mystic in us, we can figure out what it is. And so that's what got me to looking at how do I learn more faster? And that's where I learned about stopping trauma at the source. So I'm in the middle of Iowa, a relatively conservative section of the United States, doing something that is relatively esoteric. And I really don't have the interaction with other professionals that I need to be able to grow. And that, and I'm extraordinarily lazy. <laughs> because if I wanted to interact with other professionals at my level, I would have to work at it. So I said to myself, self, what's the easiest way to do this? How about I host a conference call every Monday night and just invite other people like me to be on that line with me? And then we visit, and then they end up teaching me. And all I have to do is dial the phone. And so for the last three or four years, I've hosted a conference call. It's one of those free ones, you know, that, so it doesn't cost me anything. And it's every Monday night at 8 o'clock Central, and the number's there, 712-775-7000. Uh, and then it asks you for this PIN number, and the PIN number is 647-410-POUND. This isn't a business call where, and tonight I would like to sell you for $49.99 plus shipping and handling. No, it, what this is, is a call where energy workers, radionics professionals, and other healers call in and we just visit. And we exchange information. And we learn from each other. And we could talk about anything on this call except politics. But about, but about anything else. And, and it's been a tremendous learning experience for me and a tremendous growth experience for me. And while I started it for relatively, while I started it for relatively selfish reasons, what I found it is, it is by sharing this knowledge, it's helped all of us grow faster. So I'd love to have you on my call, but just as a clue, it's really cool to be able to get these numbers and do your own thing. So you could actually start your own group of folks that are kind of pushing together. And, and guess what? That's kind of what ASD is about. You know, we get together, we exchange information, and we learn. So that when we leave this convention, we know more about some really neat stuff than we knew before. And that's why I started that call. And that's why you know, as we began looking at these cases where we simply were not getting the results we needed. Why aren't we getting the results we needed? And that's where the topic of this, this subject came from with the stopping trauma at its source. And of course, there's a lot more information out there. And so if you have enough energy, you can change the information. And as a, as a farmer and a shade tree mechanic, I oftentimes think of things in terms of volts. You know, so if there's a certain energy pattern out there, it's stored at a certain voltage. You know, that's absolutely the wrong terminology for anything scientific, but for me it works because I understand my car is 12 volt, my house is 110 volt. So, if I tried to run my refrigerator off of my car, it's not going to work. But if I plug my house into my car, that may be a little bit too much for it. I could certainly change the information. <laughs> so let's go back and look at everything is energy and information. Everything is a frequency. So if you have an issue in your system, no matter what that issue is, and let's say that issue is soybean cyst nematodes, or that issue is an infection, or that issue is some sort of dysfunction. 
or some sort of disease, then whatever that thing is we're talking about, it has its own unique frequency. And boy, that blue works good, don't it? <laughs> All right. So it has, it has some sort of frequency. If it has a frequency, then the things we do to that frequency either make it stronger or suppress it. So when I have a craving for chocolate, well, we know that if we have a craving for chocolate, it's probably a magnesium deficiency or a Hershey bar deficiency. It could be either one. <laughs> but when I have a craving for chocolate, that is simply a frequency. No more, no less. When I eat the chocolate, it suppresses that frequency. Okay. When I pick up my superb cup of coffee, the dark roast, and I drink the coffee, and I don't have the chocolate, that makes the desire for the chocolate become stronger, so it increases that resonant frequency. To put it in a different way, if I have a bacterial infection in a system, that bacterial infection has a certain frequency. Think of it as a certain radio station. And I can tune into that radio station, and that radio station is either loud or soft. Okay. If I have a bacterial infection in a system, and I tune into that radio station or that frequency, if I add sugar to that system, it grows the bacterial infection. So it makes that frequency stronger. And so in my system, the way I look at things, all I'm looking at is the things that are happening to us and that we put different labels on. They are just symptoms. It is just a resonant frequency. So for me, I could absolutely care less whether it was E. coli or limes or an aspirin deficiency. I don't care because all that is is a symptom. And for me, it is just a different frequency. So what I'm looking for is how do I suppress that frequency to make that symptom go away, or how do I enhance that frequency to make it stronger? I really want to get the mumbo jumbo and the magic and the mystical out of it. And I think we've all run across different practitioners that, you know, that think in terms of magical and mystical. But for me, the first time that I saw somebody ride a unicycle, I knew it couldn't be done. Because it's impossible. There's no way that a human being can perch on a wheel and ride around. It's absolutely pure magic that somebody could ride a unicycle. And then in southern Iowa, there's a small rural town where the uh, second grade teacher taught all of the kids to ride unicycles. And so you've got this town in the middle of nowhere, you know, it, it's farm, it's rural, and then you've got dozens of eight-year-olds riding unicycles. Okay, so for my idea that it can't be done, well, maybe it can. So it wasn't magical or mystical. And I began looking at all things not as magical or mystical, but if it happened once, it's possible. If it's possible, I should be able to learn how to do it myself. Now that may mean I may not have the talent to be able to do it as well as you, but that doesn't mean that I can't do it. That doesn't mean it's not possible. And so our whole world is a system of possibilities. And when we look at things in terms of frequency, of course, being an American, if I've got an infection in a herd and the infection is this big, what I want to do is take the biggest hammer I can and whack it. You know. And I'm a farmer, so I absolutely believe in the moron theory. <laughs> Do you know what the moron theory is? If a little bit's good, you put a little more on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. So, so, that's, so that's the moron theory. So it's force against force. 
And that's how, that's how radionics really has been, has been trained, was force against force. So if I've got this frequency in at this amount and it's stored at 12 volts, then I'm going to whack it with something that's at least 12 volts. <laughs> changing the frequency, you're talking about changing the intensity. Am I correct? Yes, at okay. this point, the question was, you're not talking about changing the frequency, you're talking about changing the intensity. And at this point, you're, you're, you're right. But what we're going to be talking about is changing the frequency itself. But if we don't have enough energy, we aren't able to change either the frequency or the intensity. Once we have enough energy or have enough voltage, then we can change either one of them. And so in radionics practices, you know, if I've got something stored at 12 volts, I'm going to whack it with something that has more than 12 volts. And it will go away. If it's 100 volts, 100 volts. If it's 1,000, 1,000. And so for years, they've called me more power Marty. Because if there's another device out there that I could add that would give me more power, oh, yeah. If I could wire that instrument into to 220 or 440 or however what voltage, oh yeah. If I could get a bigger antenna or a bigger instrument or more dials or switches, oh yeah. And if those dials will light up, oh yeah. I've got a friend that's building a radionics machine and you remember in those little scientific uh, uh, toys, you know, where you put your hand on the globe and all the little sparks come out? If you could have one of those on that, oh yeah. <laughs> How cool would that be, oh yeah. Okay, so it's more power, Marty. But what I found was more power was not always the answer. More force is not always the answer. And nature really doesn't appreciate force. Nature appreciates finesse. And if it's an E. coli infection, and I'm just going to whack it with 400 volts of whatever, wah, okay. Well, that infection is simply a, cis, a symptom of whatever the problem is. And if all I'm doing is looking at symptoms, then I'm never going to address what the original problem was. And I've had a number of people come to me in my different classes, and they talk about it, and they say, you know, Marty, I want to make sure that I want to work on people, you know, because I've got people that have disease and I want to work with them. Absolutely, this works for two-leggeds. But if you're practicing medicine in our industry and you don't have a license, then you really don't understand what it is we do anyway. Think about what a doctor does. And it's not a lot dissimilar than the Cadillac mechanic. The doctor is paid to find out what is wrong and then to find a way to reduce those symptoms. On occasion, that, that the physician will find out what it is that actually heals and makes it go away, but much of the time they reduce the symptoms. If you buy a brand new Cadillac, and you take it to the dealer and say, I would like for you to check out my Cadillac. And they take your beautiful Cadillac back to the, the mechanic. The mechanic is going to try to find out everything that's wrong. You know, this little plastic hudakai is broken, or this is, you know, and they're going to fix all this stuff. And so they're absolutely going to find something wrong. Has anybody ever taken a car into a dealership where they didn't find something that was wrong? Okay. Wow, there was one. Okay. But if you take that same car to your local garage, he's going to look at it and go, you know, those little plastic things break all the time and it makes no difference. So in, in our business, we really don't have the qualifications, most of us. And it's certainly not our thing to find out what that symptom is and make it go away. That's not what we do. What we do is we try to find the cause of the problem, correct the cause, and allow the body to heal itself. Because when the cause goes away, the body takes care of it. And it doesn't make any difference if it is a chicken, a frog, or a stalk of corn. 
if there is a disease in that organism, there is always a cause, and when you correct the cause, it goes away. What Phil Callahan did a number of years ago, he was studying plants and insects, and he found that the insects have these antennas that look just like the high-end communication antennas that he was using in the military as a military communications officer. And so he began studying the antennas on these little bugs. And what he found was that when the bugs are attacking a plant, it is because that plant is putting off frequencies that the bugs can see. And if the plant is healthy, the bugs can't even see that plant because that little bug that comes in to eat the plant, its job is to go ahead and recycle those organisms that are not fit to reproduce. And so what works in plants works in people. So if you're one of the people that the mosquitoes and all that are attracted to, there is absolutely a cause. It's not magical, it's not mystical, it can be found out what it is and it can be corrected. However, when you and I are picnicking together, it's okay with me if all the mosquitoes go to you. <laughs> so we can put off fixing that until later. So it's energy and information, energy and information, energy and information. Well, this leads us back to some of the projects that we ran across that we simply could not solve. We didn't have enough power. The Intensity was too high, and even though we were hitting it with everything we had, we simply were not getting results. Well, in our holographic scalar universe, we experience time, but the universe just gives us time as a way to keep track of things. In the scalar world, there is no time. Our brain works on a scalar frequencies. That's why we're able to think back and think forward, and that perfectly explains all of the psychic phenomena that we've lived with and heard about, is that time is a fantasy that works well for us, but it doesn't actually, actually exist. And so we began playing with what happens if I work to see if I can balance that frequency earlier. And for me, that led me kind of a, down a real interesting road. I began to think, okay, our antenna that we reach into the scalar information field is really our DNA, and DNA is a scalar antenna. Okay. So the DNA does not store all of the information to make every protein that's in your body, but the DNA is the antenna into the information field that has all that. So we have this scalar antenna. My scalar antenna is different than yours. That's why we look different. But it's an awful lot like yours. In fact, my scalar antenna is almost identical to my mother's and my father's. It's almost identical to my siblings, my cousins, it's a little bit different. But it is extraordinarily similar to my fathers, my grandfathers, my great-grandfathers, my great-great-grandfathers, back, 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 back. And if there is no time in the real world, and their antenna is almost the same as mine, then they should kind of resonate together. And I'm thinking about this at night, going, this is really cool. I wonder if. And as dowsers, we, always, we, we absolutely know that it's not the answer that is so exciting. It's when we find the right question. And it's almost like you have to be this tall to ride the ride because when that question comes to you, you go, oh my gosh, that question is so obvious. Why didn't I think of it before? But I wasn't ready for it before. And so what happens if, if our antennas are so much alike, what happens if I pull out a picture, or in our case, a witness, of my great, 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 great grandfather in his Civil War uniform, okay, and I work on his trauma 
and then analyze to see how it affects me. Okay. All right. This is really dumb, right? Okay. I've got a picture of a dead guy who's been dead for 150 years. Okay. And I'm playing around on this picture and I'm checking to see what the results are today. Wow. How cool is that? The trauma of your ancestors still resonates with you because since there is no time, the trauma that they are, went through is what they're actually going through, which still vibrates with you. Okay. This is really cool stuff. What other trauma might be resonating with my antenna? You know, if I'd have been running around in the Garden of Eden, completely naked with the most beautiful woman in the world for 900 years, and suddenly the Lord threw me out of the garden, that would be a trauma. <laughs> I mean, that would, holy mackerel. You know, I got, just got thrown out of the, out of the garden, me and my, my wife. And then we began checking to see what some of these traumas and we, with our instrument, it allows us to ask very specific questions and to tune into very specific things so we can measure the amount of trauma that is still resonating with our antennas. I've got a dear friend of mine and we said, okay, let's find out about the Irish potato famine. And I dial it in and we're doing our stuff, which is the left brain part of using the instrument to do that. For dowsers, you simply form that idea and so we go, okay, let's check the Irish potato famine. Let's see how that affects Marty. Nothing. Nope, Irish potato famine doesn't affect me. Irish potato famine absolutely affects a good friend of mine whose ancestors happen to have been. Hmm. Huh. Okay, World War I, how does that affect me? Boom, boom, boom. You know, those frequencies are still affecting me. World War II, those frequencies affect me. The Civil War, those frequencies affect me. Atlantis, Lemuria, yup. And so now when somebody is describing some kind of a tragic event in a, in a long lost civilization, I've got a way to see if I was part of that or not. How cool is that? <laughs> And as we start looking at these different things, we find that not only has the, has the trauma of our ancestors still affecting us, the trauma of our brothers and sisters are affecting us now. And as we clean up our antennas and get all of the stuff off of them, which other speakers here would refer to as on the path of enlightenment. But as we are getting our own stuff out of the way, and as we're cleaning up, suddenly we began feeling the trauma of complete strangers. Oh my gosh. These writings and this stuff that these people have been talking about for all these years, suddenly I'm tall enough to ride that ride. Now I understand. Because I'm starting to feel that, like I said last night, it's not us and them. It's really not even all us. It's all we. And I can feel that. Now, I'm just tall enough to ride this ride, okay? <laughs> I'm not an expert on it. But now I understand that. And so we began looking at the source of this trauma. But as kind of a left brain guy doing right brain work, I wanted to narrow it down even more. And I wanted something that I could use very specifically. And so what we began looking at is, OK, universe, if I've got something going wrong in an organism, and we've done everything we possibly can, and it's not correcting it, okay, there was a point in time when it started. there was an inception point. Now, when we think of an infection, we think of, 
oh my gosh, you know, he caught cold when he sat next to that plague victim on the plane, you know. Or, you know, they picked up that disease when they went into the, into the hospital. Or, you know, when your granddaughter sneezed all over you. Bless her heart. And, you know, and so that's what we normally think of. Oh, okay, that's when it started. Except that's not when it started. When it started was when something happened in your energy field that made you susceptible to whatever that was. Now, as a left brain type, I really want to know all of that stuff. But as a dowser, the universe already knows what the inception point of the cause of the trauma is. Okay. That's probably the biggest thing I want you to take notes on. The inception point of the cause of the trauma. I do not care when the infection started because the infection is a symptom. I don't care when that started. What I care about is the when the cause started. So, I've got an old car in the middle of Iowa and in Iowa we use a tremendous amount of salt on the roads. So if I've got a great big rust hole in a fender, you know, I really don't care that, you know, the rust hole started, you know, two years ago. What I care about is the cause of the rust hole, and that was when that rock chipped the paint. That's what I care about is the cause. Well, gosh, what is the cause of the E. coli, blah, blah, blah. The universe already knows. The universe can take care of all that. And for those of you that have been in my class, you realize that because of my energy efficiency, <laughs> that I'm a firm believer that anything that needs done, it's a good idea to hire somebody that actually knows how to do it properly. <laughs> so you hire the guy, okay? So when you're working in the spiritual realm, there are entities that know how to do that stuff. And they know how to do it really well. And I was taught that each one of us has a guardian angel. Well, there's over 7 billion people on this earth. Most of them never use their guardian angels. Now, so I'm thinking, here's a whole bunch of unemployed guardian angels. <laughs> they would got things they would like to do. They're bored. So how about I just let them take care of the details? No, no, because they already know those details. I don't need to know those details. And it'd be kind of fun, but they already know that stuff. And so all I have to do is ask. And because I've got a radionics machine and I've got dials and I've got numbers and I've, I can do all that, I can put dials and numbers to it. Because that really is good candy for my left brain. Oh, yes, here's, yeah, yes, is it? You know, the frequency is 99.732 dash 67.101. Ooh, that's a good number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The universe doesn't care. All that does is just kind of keep my left brain something for it to chew on. And so what I do is I pull out my dowser, you know, and a lot of times I'll use a pendulum, a lot of times I'll use a rub plate on my instrument, and I'll say, okay, I define the current issue, whatever it is. And let's say that current issue is, let's go with a two-legged, because two-legged is easy. Okay. Let's say the issue in this particular two-legged is a sore knee. Okay. So this particular two-legged has a sore knee. What is the year that the cause of this sore knee started? What is the inception point of the cause of this sore knee? Now, if I ask the two-legged, you know, why is his knee sore? The two-legged will say, well, in high school, I was the quarterback. And I got tackled by whatever, you know, while we were scoring the 
the winning touchdown of the homecoming game, and blah, 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 you know, and he'll, he'll tell me this whole story that makes no difference to anybody except him, and I could care less because it has nothing to do with his sore knee. Because his sore knee is there because of a reason. And he got tackled because of a reason. In fact, he was playing football because of a reason, and it probably, again, all it is is just another story, 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 story. Somewhere, there is a cause. I don't need to know that cause. I don't really want to know the cause. Because again, it's just a story. It's just a symptom. And it's a symptom that the angels know how to handle that stuff, and I really don't care. But I want to know what the inception point is, and so I will douse for the year. Sounds good. When I first started this, I would go, okay, this particular creature is 50 years old. So somewhere between 1966 and now, so I start dowsing between 1966 and now, because if it's a cause in this body, it must have happened here. And then things got weird. <laughs> what I found out was the inception point of the cause may not have been during the lifetime of that individual. And so my left brain is going, Okay, no, this is weird. This is really weird. And my right brain's going, oh yeah, let's go. Let's find out some more stuff. Let's find out some more stuff. You know, and, and then I began putting the pieces together and, and it all fits into this great big pattern. And so don't be surprised when you're trying to douse for the date. At the very least, start looking in the right century you may want to look in the right millennium. And for me, the question I'll ask is I will pick out, is it before or after the year 1000? And I use 1000 not because there's anything significant about it, but it's candy for my left brain to chew on and it gives me a point of reference. Okay. What we found was and confirmed that oftentimes trauma in this lifetime has nothing that we can figure out logically to do with this lifetime. We did this in one of our radionics uh, classes and the lady that was working found a trauma that was affecting this lifetime that had a date of 1,118 May 31st at 7.10 in the morning. They didn't have wristwatches then. <laughs> you, know, you know, and so the left brain going, well, was that Eastern time? <laughs> was it daylight savings time? You know, and, and, you know, and the left brain's going, well, you know, we had that change in the calendar when we went from the Georgian or whatever, you know, was it really May or was it actually April or was it, you know, uh, yeah, and so your, your left brain is trying to figure out all this stuff. Give your left brain some more candy and let your right brain continue to work because all that stuff doesn't make any difference because you hired the folks that know what's going on. When you ask the right question, they gave you the answer that works for this particular situation. It doesn't make any difference if you think it's the right answer. In fact, since we have so very little information to work with in the totality, chances are whatever you tried to figure out with your monkey mind was the wrong answer anyway. So again, hire the professional. So they give you this date. Now for me, in the radionics, so I have this issue, whatever it is, and I have an intensity of the issue, and I have the intensity of the issue today. And you can do that radionically, and you can go, okay, and you can use whatever kind of scale works for you, and you have an intensity of whatever this issue is today. And let's go with E. coli. Okay, I've, I've got a, a subject that has an E. coli infection, and the intensity of the infection today is 307. Okay. okay. So, 
I go back to the inception point that I doused, and in my mind, I fix that date. May 7th, 1118 A.D. at 10.07 in the morning, or whatever. Whatever the date, time, and minute. And I check for the intensity of the E. coli for this particular individual at that time. And I find the intensity for E. coli on this completely mythical figure from a thousand years ago is one hundred and half or whatever it is. So this scalar antenna is resonating with this cause from this other time. So what we do is then in our minds in radionics, we actually write down the date and time and we stick it on the instrument to fix that time. As dowsers, we just go, okay. <laughs> All right, same, same business, okay. And then we zero out or balance or remove the intensity of that pattern, the pattern of the cause at that time. And then we go back and we measure the intensity of the E. coli today. So for radionics, that's two different frequencies. We are working on the cause, but the effect of that cause is the infection itself. So the frequency of the cause is going to be different than the frequency of the E. coli. That cause, okay, carried throughout time. Understood. Okay. Are you talking about the frequency back then? Yes. It's the same as the frequency today, whereas the intensity deferred. This was 300, this was 100. Right. right. The, the question is... I'm trying to follow you. Yeah, that's right. We're talking, about, we're talking about the intensity of the cause and the intensity uh, of the E. coli over, you know, over the time period. Let me make that more clear. The cause at the inception point has a certain frequency yes. and has a certain intensity. Right. On this end, today, the frequency of the, and the intensity of the cause is still there, but now I also have a frequency and intensity of the effect as well. And so that cause is still affecting the person today. And I love it. Your left brain is, is chewing on this stuff. I left my left brain a long time ago. I'm a recovered scientist, so now I have to bring my left brain back home. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Give it some candy to chew on. Okay. So you have, you have case past, case present. Yes. Case okay. past, case present. Same E. coli infection. Similar. Okay. okay. In the past, you may not have any intensity of the E. coli infection. What you have is the intensity of the cause of the E. coli infection. Okay. But today, you have the intensity of the cause because the cause was never cured. The cause was never made to go away. So today you have the effect. You have yes. the infection. Yes. At the same frequency but different intensity. No. No. There, there's, a, there's a frequency for the cause. Okay. There's also a frequency for the effect. Okay. Two different okay. animals. So you have two different frequencies now. Today. Okay. okay. All right. So we have two different frequencies today. Okay. One is the frequency of the cause because we never corrected the cause. Boy, does that sound like what we run across a lot in our work. Okay. But we also have the frequency of the effect. Okay. For those that work a lot with emotions, you know, and you've, you've read the emotion code and the rest of that, and, you know, this, this person has some kind of dysfunction in their liver, and the emotion person says, well, that dysfunction in your liver is a result of anger built up in the, in the liver. You know, the cause is the anger, okay? So what you've got is the anger, which is the cause, and you have the cirrhosis or whatever label you want to put on it, which is the effect. 
same thing, except the anger in that liver, which we think of, it was because our father or our mother or, you know, or you know, that anger could be because they didn't even give the president a golf cart to run around here. Can you imagine? I mean, the president doesn't even get a golf cart to ride. Huh. Whatever the, whatever the silly anger issue is, it, it makes no difference. So cause, effect, cause, effect. So when we zero out the cause at the time it happened, and it makes no difference when that time was, then the effect goes away on its own. And so when I take care of the cause at the inception point, I don't need to use this extraordinarily large hammer today to whack it because it will go away on its own. Thank you. You felt you was my problem. Yeah. Because all too often we are stuck in the left brain logical this world is made out of real stuff. Okay. All right. I mean that's what we are supposed to believe. It's made out of real stuff. It's not real stuff. The people out there think it is and sometimes they fool us into believing it's made out of real stuff, but it isn't real stuff. If it was real stuff, all of the miracles that we live every day couldn't happen. You know, and what got me started on this is, you know, as a little kid, I'm sitting in, the, in church and they're talking about Moses with the, he's got his, he's got his walking stick and he goes to the, the Pharaoh's wizards and Moses turns his walking stick into a snake and the Pharaoh's wizards turn their walking sticks into snakes and they have a big snake fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Moses had the power of the Lord behind him, you know, that's some pretty mystical magical stuff. And so that's how Moses was able to change, you know, his stick into a snake. But if the story's true, and there, we really can't lose anything by thinking about if it is true, but if it is true, somebody knows how to turn sticks into snakes. As a seven-year-old, how cool would that be? Okay. Yeah. And so as I hear about these different people doing these miracle things, for me it's not mystical, magical, miracle, impossible. It is, what if it's true? What if this women's intuition thing is actually true? <laughs> I've been married for over 30 years. It is true. <laughs> it's really true. It also seems to be attached to some kind of a photographic member, memory thing that remembers things that I have forgotten 29 years ago. Okay. Has something to do with cause an effect. <laughs> you know, I was listening to a radio show and they were interviewing an old guy that had been married for 55 years. And they were talking about all the wonderful things he'd done in his life and the interviewer was a, was a young man and he, was, he goes, oh my gosh, you've been married to the same woman for 55 years? And he goes, oh no, she is not the same woman. <laughs> And then she pipes in, and he is not the same man. <laughs> okay, cause and effect, cause and effect. Yes, ma'am. Okay, help me understand. So okay. we have the present situation. Okay. That's the manifestation of the underscoring energy, which is the cause at the moment. Yes. Which has a different frequency from the effect. Yes. Okay, so you track the frequency of the cause back in time to find another a similar frequency back in time which has a smaller intensity, fix that intensity, this goes away. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the question was. Uh, here, let, let me restate it first. Okay. Okay, okay the, the, because we've just got the one mic. Okay, so we have the manifestation of the issue today that has a certain frequency, and I'm, I'm going to say radio station. Okay. has a certain frequency or radio station. 
the cause of that manifestation has a different frequency or radio station. So when we go back in time, we can trace back when that cause started and by fixing it then, the manifestation today goes away. It is. As you can see, the blue stands out so well. <laughs> it's. I'm sorry, and, but again, that's that. You know, as we're as we're thinking of the of the picture. When you're trying to find to solve an issue, okay. Think of whatever the manifestation is as the result. I bake a cake. Okay. The cake is the result. Okay. If I didn't use the right, okay, let's say that I used margarine instead of butter. Okay. The cake looks fine. It tastes like, you know, it, it tastes, it tastes, yeah, I think that's why they call it margarine, because it tastes marginal. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. All right, all right. So the, so the cause of the cake tasting bad, our left brain logical mind would say, because you used margarine. But as we're tracing it back with our left brain monkey mind, we used margarine because there wasn't butter. There wasn't butter because there was a commercial you know, they had all these public service announcements years ago that butter was supposed to be bad for you, and so we were convinced that, that you know, we would use margarine. We had those commercials because the people that made the oleo margarine, you know, were able to get that push through the FDA about the, the butter fat content and, the, you know, and how bad it is for you, blah, blah, blah. And so the cause was not that I put the margarine in, not that I had margarine instead of butter, not that, I mean, so you just keep on tracing that back. And that seems like a, for me, I like to think of terms in, you know, fairly simple pictures. So the cause of that lousy cake ultimately was we didn't use butter, but originally was because of the fact that we had the oleo in the first place, which was, could have possibly been the, uh, some kind of an economic thing. Everybody's heard the story about the, about the young wife, you know, who is making the Christmas ham. And, you know, and so she's got, so she buys this enormous Christmas ham and she cuts it in half just like her mother did and cooks it in two pans. And they ask, well, why do you cut it in half? Well, we cut it in half because that's how we do it in our family. We always cut the Christmas ham in half. And so we asked mom why she did it. She says, well, I did it because grandma always did it that way. Because that's how we do it in our family. We cut the Christmas dinner, the Christmas ham in half. And so they go to grandma and say, grandma, why in our family do we always cut the Christmas ham in half when we bake it? And she goes, well, that's because my pan was too small. <laughs> yeah. So it has nothing to do with all of the rest of this wonderful, mystical, magical thing, there was actually a cause. It's all energy and information. If we ch have enough energy, intensity, we can change the information. Another way to think about it, let's say that we're listening to WHO radio you know, the flamethrower of the Midwest with 50,000 watts of whatever, blah, 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 and we're listening to Rush Limbaugh because, okay. So let's suppose that we walk into that studio, we pull Rush Limbaugh out, and we put, I don't know, the character of your choice in there. Maybe somebody good looking. <laughs> but let's say that we go ahead and we put in Janis Joplin, and we set Janis Joplin in that chair. We did not change the intensity of that signal. 
Well, I guarantee you we changed the information. <laughs> and so it's energy and information. That's what we're looking for is to change the information to make it more coherent. There's a question back. Yes, sir. And the question was, you know, are we looking for the cause or a cause? That's exactly the thing that your left brain is talking about. But as we ask the question of spirit, source, whatever, we're looking for the cause of this issue. And spirit will find the cause. Now there are ultimately, in, in complex cases, are going to be multiple causes or ancillary causes. And so what you may find is that when you take care of this cause at the inception point, that the intensity of the manifestation may have only increased or decreased by two thirds. Okay. If it worked once, let's do it again. The moron theory. A little bit was good, so let's put a little more on. So let's find what, and you ask the same question of source. You're dousing the same question. What is the inception point of the cause of this issue? Yes, sir. If I understand it right, you don't even have to know the cause, just the date, time, and minute. Mm -hmm. Great left brain question. The question was, we don't have to know what the cause was. All we have to know is the date, time, and minute. From the left brain logical scientific view, of course that's impossible. However, spirit already knows what the cause is. What we call it makes no difference. And so for mind candy, that would be really fun to know, but it is completely irrelevant information. It is simply a story. I've got a friend of mine that's a, a wonderful Huna healer. And when he's working with people, of course, you know, they're telling their story. You know, it's, you know, and, and it's kind of like an organ recital. You know, well, my liver doesn't work because of this, and my heart doesn't work because of this, and my pancreas doesn't work because of this, and blah, blah, blah. And they're telling a story about all this stuff. And he says, that story is very important to them because it is the excuse they use to have this stuff. But it is just a story and it is complete fabrication, it has nothing to do with reality except in their own mind. The real cause was this other thing and you don't even have to know what the name of it is. All you have to know is that spirit told you that it happened here and you can zero it out. More questions? Yes, sir. Okay, two different groups of people here. The question was, you don't have to know the frequency of the cause, you just simply have to know the date and time. Not quite correct. From the radionics view, you know, I want to have the frequency of that cause and I will scan to find that frequency. From the dowsing view, that frequency is represented by my very clear intent of what I'm dowsing for. I am specifically looking for the cause of this issue. So when we're dialing our machines, and I'm specifically looking for the cause of the issue, I'm gonna get some numbers and some settings on the dial. I'm gonna find that radio station, and that helps me stay focused. For the dowsers, we maintain focus by simply asking the right question and staying focused on that question. We don't have to know what the name or the label of the cause is, what we are looking for is the cause of this issue. And that's how we find the frequency, that's how we stay focused on our intent if we're just doing it dowsing. After we find the cause, you can absolutely name it. You can call it whatever you want to. You could call it M&Ms, absolutely. And does it make any difference? Absolutely not. Because again, what, we've, what we're doing is we are occupying our left brain to keep it doing whatever it's supposed to be doing and we are allowing spirit to do all the heavy lifting. Because there's over seven billion unemployed 
guardian angels that know how to do this stuff. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You're right in the ballpark, uh, but let's narrow. Let, let, let's get you closer to base. The the uh, when we have an issue, the issue is simply the manifestation. We don't care when the issue started. Okay, so they could have had a sore knee since high school. We don't care when the issue started. What we're looking for is the point where the cause started. We don't care what the cause is, because spirit knows. We care the date of the cause. Or if you want to go even more left brain and simply turn the whole job over to spirit, just ask spirit to go back to the cause of the event and fix it. Okay, which, but my left brain, I like to know the date because that's, that's candy for my left brain. Okay, so for dowsers, for dowsers, Let's go the entire left brain. Okay. Let's say, for instance, I have some sort of a dis-ease, whatever it is, and I call it Frank. And I can tell you all about Frank. Okay. Oh my gosh, I've got Frank. You come to help me with Frank. You don't care about Frank. What you care about is what caused Frank. And so you go and you, for the left brain approach, you find the date, time, and minute, and dial that into your instrument. For the dowser, have spirit go to the inception point of the cause and scramble it. Boom. Because you don't want to go to the inception point of the frank, because frank is just a symptom. You know, it's like taking aspirin for a headache. It doesn't solve any problems, although it sure feels like it does. Okay, so what we're looking for is cause. I'm just curious if the inception point is that an ancestor or is that a former life of ourselves? The, the, the question was, is the inception point a former life or is it an ancestor? Is it a parallel life? What great questions! and it gives our left brain lots of stuff to chew on. It makes no difference. However, a lot of times I'll go ahead and douse it just to find out because, you know, it'd be kind of cool. If I actually had a former life where I was a pirate and I buried a whole bunch of stuff, <laughs> you know, where? Is it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right, so the question was, could there be multiple causes? So what we, so in radionics what I do is I, I measure the intensity, in this case of Frank, I eliminate the cause, and I check to see how the intensity of Frank has changed, and if it hasn't zeroed out, then there must still be another cause. And so I'll just continue to do that until, you know, Frank is gone. And what is really cool is that Frank actually goes away. So I haven't, I haven't done anything to Frank itself. You know, I didn't go in there and, you know, and spend hours balancing the, the minerals and the vitamins and the toxins and the trauma and all, you know, because that's just candy for my left brain. What I did, I just accepted the fact that we are all in the same hologram we're all connected. Source has all that information. And they got the guys. Can you fix this for me? 
Yup. And they tell us that ask and you shall receive. In my business, the question is what's important. If you ask the wrong question, you will always get the wrong answer. And the picture I use is, Lord, would you please watch over Mary Ann as she is driving to the mall? Yep, I'm watching. Ooh, 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 boy, that's gonna hurt. We asked the wrong question. Okay, All right. there were some more questions. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, I went right behind you. Yes. So as far as this is concerned, if I jump back and say, okay, whatever happens within the 30s, mm -hmm. I can say, what is the intensity? And let's dial that down. Yeah. Right. And, and again, it's the, it's the cause. And it doesn't make any difference if it's in the 30s. Make, you, know, you know, is it? It absolutely makes no difference, all the details, because it's all just story anyway. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, um, Wendy was first. Okay, so you, so you found the cause of Frank. Yes. You fixed the cause of Frank. Right. Are you fixing all the other Franks that everybody else has? Did you fix the cause of Frank? The question was, when you go back and you, and you fix the cause of Frank, did you fix all the other Franks? Sometimes you do. Because, what, what, because we're all resonating together, there is no them, it's only we. When you fix these problems in the past, oftentimes, so let's say that I've got some issue associated with getting thrown out of the garden. I had 900 years with the most beautiful woman in the world, and we were running around naked in the Garden of Eden. How cool is that? So getting thrown out, there's a lot of trauma associated with that. As we start to heal that trauma that is affecting me, it's affecting all of my ancestors. It's affecting all of my descendants, descendants my brothers, my sisters, my cousins. It's affecting you, and it's also affecting everybody else because we took out the cause. How cool is that? Absolutely. Um, you were first. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just asking a scientific question. First of all, <coughs> physics is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So how do you dial it down to zero? What happens to the energy? Where did it go? Okay. The question is, since energy is neither created nor destroyed, when you dial it down, what happens to the energy? What we did was we changed the information. So it's, really, it's really more correct to say um, you transmuted the energy rather than removing it. You don't remove energy. The, the, the question was it's, it's more correct to say we transmuted the energy, we didn't remove it. You are absolutely right. Because, but for me, I'm looking at this energy and information. And the picture in my mind is Rush Limbaugh is no longer sitting in that chair. I put somebody else in that chair. I rather like to say the saber-toothed tiger is now a harmless pussycat. The, yeah, absolutely. The saber-toothed tiger is now a harmless pussycat. It's still there, but yeah. it's no longer harmful. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, since we burned up you know, most of the time, now we get down to the chase. And, and again, as I'm doing different projects, you know, I've got other stuff that I want to do. Okay, so you have an issue in front of you. Okay. What you're looking for is the inception point of the cause. For a dowser, you can go right to some of the Raymond Grace techniques and the question is, what is the inception point of the cause? Can you scramble it? 
And if you got the bobber and, and it'll go or your dowser, you know, and so what you're doing, you're focusing on the inception point of the cause. And so for the last 45 minutes, basically what I've been trying to, trying to say and, and use as many words as I possibly can to say it, this is an election year, so we have to do that, <laughs> is that the, all too often we are looking at the issues that are happening in this reality as if it's the issue we're working on. The issue is always a symptom. This wonderful physique, physique is a symptom of years of connoisseur donuts. Okay. It's a symptom. The symptom is different than the manifestation. So instead of looking for getting rid of this whatever it is, we are looking to scramble the cause. It's the right question. Uh, so the question was, once you get to the inception point, yeah. you say, we scrambled it, we did it, we did it, I mean, that's where it's It's absolutely that easy. Okay. And, and, and for those of us that do the radionics, you know, we have to have the numbers and the dials because it's good candy for our left brain, you know, and, then we'll, and we'll find all that date stuff. All of the date stuff, all of the rest of that is wonderful information for us to chew on, but it's not necessary for the job. Yes, yes ma'am. Poof. Okay, I got it right. Thank you. Okay, and, and, and again, with, you know, with, the, with the scrambling and the zero point, it's just two different descriptions of exactly the same process. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it seems to me that what you have not discussed yet is the role of the client and the need for a story for the client that they can accept so that they can be open to the healing. I don't believe that you can heal, change the whatever frequency, whatever you want to call it, if your client doesn't buy at some level into opening up. Um, okay, the, I think the, it's a two-way street, and so just doing the radionics is not enough if you haven't got something that allows them to bring to you the level of trust that's necessary for the change to happen. Okay. The, the question was that uh, healing is much more complicated than simply us doing something somewhere else and that the client has to be part of that because that story is important to them. That is absolutely correct. This is one tool to add to your toolbox, but if your only tool is this hammer, some of the more delicate issues are not going to respond well to a hammer, okay? But this is another way to finish the rest of it. You know, and in, in my business, what I've found is that there's a tremendous amount going on as to why this individual manifested this and why they hang on to it and, and is it their soul path? And if, there, if it's part of their soul path, we can dance around naked under a full moon swinging a chicken over our head and it is not going to make any difference. If it is something that they need and won't release, it will not make any difference because that's part of who they have to be. However, when we do all the rest of the stuff that we know how to do, this particular tool is excellent to reach into the toolbox and finish it off so that we don't have to use that great big hammer on the effect. What we can use is just a tack hammer on the cause. Ting. And watch things change. The difference between the work that any of the miracle workers do, even in this group, and everybody else, is because that connection with spirit and that in our hearts we know that we have that connection and spirit is doing it. We absolutely, the, the restriction is we have to ask the right questions. And the question for me is, 
not the symptom, but the cause. Yes, ma'am. Then we can, the question was, as, as far as karmic, what if it's part of their path? If it's part of their path, it's not changing because they're going to hang on to it. They absolutely are, are, are part and parcel of what's going on here. And, but for us, what it does is it gives us a way to address that. But we are not going to be able to change their path. If their higher self, their saints, their angels, or whatever their, their structure is said, okay, they have learned this lesson. Like for me, what I found as we're, as we're going through this, and this is, this is what works for me. It is not the ultimate truth. Okay? It's just what works for me. What I found was that, and I've read it somewhere, and I've forgotten who I read it from, but there's, there's going to be three causes of dysfunction. There's going to be a physical cause, there's going to be an emotional cause, and there's going to be a spiritual cause. And if any one of those is still out there, you're going to have the result. But in a basic you know, 45 minutes or whatever, this gives us another tool to work with. This doesn't take away from all of the other wonderful things you already know. This is not the way of healing. It is not the answer. It is another question to ask. Yes, ma'am. Uh, one may not be able to find it, but there's a lovely little book that's out of print called Healing the Family Tree, which is exactly what, you know, in this area that you're talking about. And I have found that having the book there allows clients to give more validity to the approach because they see it's been in print by somebody. <laughs> Healing the Family Tree, if you ever find it, get it. Yeah, the, the book is called Healing the Family Tree. We don't know who the author is. But you know, when we're working with clients, you know, it has to fit into their reality. You know, if they believe because they've been told all of their life that they are such and such a touch, then they are such and such and such. Yeah. And, you know, and the, what, the clearest example that I have, when I was in elementary school, we've got like 30 kids in, the elementary, in, in my class. In first grade, Pat was a star. He could play Little League and actually hit the ball. Wow. He could throw a ball and get it close to the kid he was throwing it at. This kid is a superstar. Somewhere between first and second grade, Pat found out he was stupid. And as soon as he found that out, then that's who he decided he was. That's as good as he got. But he found out he was stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, and you absolutely know this, and I'm not telling you anything that you haven't heard a thousand times before by people that are much better qualified than me. But the limitations that we face every day are always between our ears. It is what we decide we can and cannot do. And as I'm learning that lesson, and I continue to learn it every day, because I learned from some of the wonderful people that are here, and they're not mystical or magical. They just have skills I don't have. I want to learn their skills. You know, there's a wonderful medical intuitive that teaches people how to see inside people. How cool is that? Yeah. And it isn't that I have been given this mystical, magical thing and I will share it with you for $150 an hour. What it is, is all of these skills are available to all of us. And because we all resonate together with that same DNA, boy, does this sound like the same stuff we've heard all our life. The better that you do, the better that I do. And so I don't do unto others as they would do unto me because, well, that's what a good Christian does. I do unto others as they would do unto me for very selfish reasons because it's good for me. So the better I treat you, the better we all do. Oh my gosh, that sounds so 
new age. <laughs> oh my gosh, that stuff in the Bible. These things that I do, you shall do and more. It's either true or it's false. If it's true, how cool is that? Yes, ma'am. The, the question was, is as you clean up this stuff, uh, you start feeling what other people are feeling. Okay, and, and for me, I have this picture of this antenna. And the antenna for my radio station has all this stuff on it. Remember, for those of a certain age, we used to have radio or TV antennas. And when the birds would build a nest on that antenna, we could never get channel 13. <laughs> and we had this 30-foot pole beside the house and we'd actually have to go out and turn it you know and so as kids in the middle of the winter when the when it wasn't going then dad would send us out to turn the the antenna and then he would holler at us from the warmth of the living room and when we got it right <laughs> so when the birds build their stuff on this antenna we can't get channel 13 and so as kids I mean there's a couple ways you can get that bird's nest off you can crawl up there with a ladder and do it properly or when nobody's looking, you can grab that pole and go and give it a good shake and hope that everything falls off. Well, our DNA is the same type of antenna and it has all of this junk on it. It's got all of this ego stuff about who I am and who I am not. It has all of these other programs on it, all of this emotional stuff stuck on it, you know, all of this other stuff and so instead of resonating with all of you, it's kind of just vibrating with Marty. Yes, I am correct. <laughs> but as we start cleaning that stuff off, suddenly our antenna begins to resonate with the people around us. And we notice it in our own personal interactions with our loved ones, because many of our loved ones have the same junk on their antenna that we have on ours. You know my wife knows what I'm thinking long before I do because we resonate together but we both have the same junk on our antenna because we've gone through the same stuff for the last 30 years but as we're cleaning up our antennas now that empath that the empath now we're starting to be able to resonate with people around us and feel their 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 emotions I used to be able to watch good war movies. Okay, you know, you've got the good guys, you know, and they've got their machine guns and they're killing bad guys left and right, and oh my gosh, what a hero thing. And, oh yeah, you know, this was good stuff. And John Wayne, you know, and he's killing the bad guys, you know. And as I've cleaned stuff off my antenna, I can't do it anymore, you know. I have a hard time getting into a lot of these different, you know, even the commercials, because I feel it. Ooh, you know, I'm a retired United States Army officer. You know, stiff upper lip, never cry, never show emotion. Boom, boom, boom. And now I'm feeling this stuff, like, like a hippie. Ooh, ooh, I have a friend that's a tree hugger. Oh my gosh. And, and so when nobody was looking one day, because after all, I have my image. I couldn't let anybody see me do this. I went out and hugged a tree. Wow. How cool is this? This stuff is real. All of that junk. I had to, I had to find the right word because it was being recorded. All of that junk, 
that has accumulated on my antenna about this reality is this way and Major Lucas is going to play this role is junk. And as I get that stuff cleaned off of it, not only am I seeing who I really am, but I'm getting to the point where I understand what you people have been talking about ever since I met the first one of you 25 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't get what you needed out of this, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with me this morning.